I can understand you've been busy since morning. I understand why your voice is low and weak. But it's a new year and I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this session. We thank you because of what you have done already. And we thank you for what you are still to do. I pray, Lord, you feel every heart, every soul, every spirit, even with the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost tonight in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. And this work you have given us to do will prosper in every hand in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to our final session on the series on the Holy Spirit. We've spoken about the nature and the names of the Holy Spirit. We've spoken about the work and the wonders of the Holy Spirit. And we've spoken about the baptism and the benefits of the Holy Spirit. And tonight we come to this final session on the grace and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost they had received Jesus had arrived in heaven sitting by the right hand of majesty on high and because of what he had promised he had shed that forth he had poured that out and he had filled them, baptized them in the Holy Ghost. It came with fire and with wind and with power and with light, with enlightenment, with understanding. The people gathered together when they heard them speaking in various languages, not gibberish, not barbaric tones real real languages and he said we hear them every one of them they magnify God and they speak in the language in which we were born and as they came together the Lord gave inspiration and courage and power power to declare the gospel Give ye to Peter. Of course, all of them, 120, cannot be preaching at the same time. They all received the Holy Ghost. And then Peter stood up and declared the word. As he declared the word, we can see, one, the fulfillment of what Christ had said. I will make you fishers of men. The people were convicted. And the people began to ask, what shall we do? And Peter told them, verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. That might surprise you in the name. It means by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that was separating them from Judaism, separating them from all the sacrifices of the Old Testament and bringing them to link up and to connect with Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who took their sins away. And so they were buried in the water when they believed. And they rose up in resurrection power, newness of power. And here is the promise that your sins will be remitted, will be cleansed, will be taken away. And ye shall receive the gift. Look at that. Ye shall receive the gift. We're talking about the grace and the gift tonight. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you. And to your children. 
and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call look at Acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 reading from verse 31 in Acts chapter 4 verse 31 and when they had prayed the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost all filled who are these people the 120 that were filled before the 3,000 that were converted already in chapter 2 and the 5,000 that uh, also joined in chapter 4 all of them as the church came together thank God there's no discrimination the grace is yours the gift is yours and you'll be part of the all in Jesus name and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God how how there's a difference between a bold voice and a cold voice and they spoke the word of God with boldness you got the message you'll always get your message verse 32 and the multitude of them that believe that means when it says they were all filled it's talking about the multitude all of them that believed they were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and tell me tell me out aloud great grace was upon them all the grace of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit the three things we're looking at number one the grace of the Holy Spirit number two the guidance of the Holy Spirit number three the gifts of the Holy Spirit the grace the guidance and the gifts of the Holy Spirit number one the grace I just read it to you now look at that again chapter 4 of Acts verse 31 and when they had preached the place was shaking when they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and he spoke the word of God with boldness for 33 and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus and great grace was upon them all as a result of a coming in indwelling them the Holy Ghost great grace came upon them we want to remind ourselves that when we get born again we receive of the grace of God and it's the grace of the Holy Spirit look at John chapter 3 in John chapter 3 reading from verse 5 and Jesus answered very late very late I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God you see when we're born again the Holy Spirit is involved and he gives us grace as we're born again verse 8 the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither 
it goeth. So is everyone, no exception. Everyone that is born of the Spirit. When we are born of the Spirit like that, what does it bring into our lives? It brings fruit into our lives. That is the manifestation of the grace of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, when he comes in, he cancels the works of the flesh. Verse 19, Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh shall manifest. Those are the works before salvation. Those, that's the character before salvation. And it says, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They are not born again yet. But then the Spirit of God comes in and it brings grace into our lives. And all the works of the flesh, they are forgiven, they are cleansed, they are cancelled, they are taken away from our lives. And now the grace of the Spirit will not bring the fruit. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, the self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust thereof. If we live in the Spirit, now we're born again. If we live in the Spirit, now we're sanctified. If we live in the Spirit, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Let us also walk in the Spirit. It brings in the grace. Romans chapter 5. Reading from verse 5. Romans chapter 5. Reading from verse 5. The grace of the Spirit that comes into our lives. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That's what the grace of the Spirit does when it comes in. It makes us to live the victorious life, the overcoming life, the righteous life. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 There is therefore now no condemnation to them Which are in Christ Jesus Who walk not after the flesh But after the spirit For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus Has made me free from the law of sin and death It makes us free It gives us grace and that grace makes us to live the overcoming life. And the Spirit of God keeps on leading, keep on guide, keeps on guiding us so that our lives are now the lives that, are glorif that glorify the Lord. And he tells us in Colossians what this grace of God does in our lives, how he applies the word of God, and how he fills us with understanding, enlightenment, and light of the scripture and of the truth. And now we're able to live the life that pleases God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms, and hymns and spiritual songs singing with tell me out aloud singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord 
and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him very clear in the word of God that when the Holy Spirit comes in abundant grace sufficient grace sustaining grace a purifying grace sanctifying grace also comes in and will live gracious lives you know what he does he also guides us and he leads us point number two the guidance of the holy spirit when jesus gave the promise he told us he emphasized to the believers that when the holy spirit comes he will guide and thank god now that you have the holy spirit it will guide you through life it will guide you you see there are people that think that guidance only comes for those who are getting married and once he has guided them and led them in getting married final that's all but no he will guide you every day he will lead you every day every decision you need to make it will guide you and every road you need to go by it will guide you every relationship you want to establish it will guide you every work you need to do it will guide you and in the works of the kingdom it will guide you in jesus name and then when you read the scriptures it will guide you to the truth in jesus name the guidance of the holy spirit we're looking at john chapter 16 john chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 13 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come is the spirit of truth it says it will guide you into tell me all truth you'll not be running helter skelter looking for the truth that spirit of truth abides in your heart and the truth of the scripture will also be made known unto you in jesus name you see you are what you eat and you are what you drink and when we talk about that spiritually the bread you eat and the water you drink or the liquid whatever it is you drink it affects your health and if you eat something good now and then just after that you go for junks things that do not satisfy they may look like they're sweet they may look like they're edible but they do not have the nutrients that will feed you and when you go for that you get sick the same thing for the people after they say they have received the truth of the spirit and then they go for this and go for this and go for that and read this and read that and go to this fellowship and go to this assembly you make yourself sick and the holy spirit is saying i'm here that's why you receive me i'm here to lead you i'm here to guide you i'm here to direct you into all truth stop running about to the places where there is no truth the total truth of the word of god and the lord will keep on leading in jesus name how be it when he the spirit of truth has come it will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you and he will show you and he will show you things to come what does that mean one he'll show you things that are still coming coming in prophecy you see the disciples did not understand the apostles did not understand eschatology all they knew is that one all these things to speak about 
about the destruction of the temple when will it take place two about your coming they didn't know about the rapture about your coming and then about the end of the world they were limited in their understanding of the things to come all of a sudden the holy ghost came to them and as the Holy Ghost came, he started guiding them and leading them in things to come. And so they began to understand, not only that, things to come. The Gentiles, they are supposed to also be saved. All that you will find in the Psalms, that the nations are going to worship the Lord. That Ethiopia will raise his hand to the Lord. And even Egypt, they will call upon the name of the Lord. And as you come to Isaiah, it says, Christ will be the light to the Gentiles. They need to understand. And that's why when God said, Peter, you'll go to the Gentiles, rise up, kill and eat. He said, no, nothing like that ever entered my mouth before. Until the Spirit said, I'm sending them. Go with them. And when he reported later, he said, The Spirit bid me go. That means then they were now understanding. And now James rose up and he said, This is exactly what the scriptures had said. Known unto God are all his words from the foundation of the earth. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. Things you need to understand before. And your character, your behavior can only be limited by what you understand. You cannot live, you cannot behave, you cannot act beyond your understanding. And if you understand only up to this low level of Christian demand, that's how you are going to behave. But then the Holy Ghost comes in and he leads you to greater truth and higher truth and fuller truth and then your life will take on a fuller demonstration of your understanding in jesus name not only that it will guide you and lead you in things to come you want to take a journey and that journey might not be uh, good uh, that is there might be hazards on the way and the lord wanting to show you things to come it will reveal to you and then you'll go to the people that you know you wanted to travel together and you say it looks like i don't think i will go again looks like i don't think i will do that again they say but why and you cannot explain fully to them because they will not understand you would not have understood that's why jesus said i have yet many things to say unto you but she cannot bear them now but when the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth has come, it will guide you into all truth. It will show you things to come. It will show you things to come. He guides and he leads. That's why you're praying, Lord, lead me by your Spirit. Guide me by your Spirit. Psalm 143. Psalm 143. We're reading from verse 10. Psalm 143, reading from verse 10. Here it tells us, 43 verse 10, Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the, into the land of uprightness it will lead you i say chapter 48 i say chapter 48 and we're reading from verse 16 come ye near unto me hear ye this i have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there am i and now and now and now the Lord God and the Spirit has sent me. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to prosper, to profit, to progress, to succeed. 
You see, there are many people, they are walking for God. They are sincere. They love God. They want to be their best. And they are striving and striving and working and laboring. But the method they will use, that they will succeed, that they will prosper, that they will profit, they don't have the methods. And when the Holy Ghost comes in, it will give you the method. Your ministry will prosper. Your family will prosper. Your relationship with your wife, your husband will prosper. Your interaction with neighbors and with believers, you'll profit thereby in Jesus' name. Your preaching will profit us. That's where I want the loudest amen. Because I know by the grace of God, now you are a preacher. I'm looking for him, looking for her. I said you are a preacher. And your preaching will profit all the people that listen to you in Jesus' name. Verse 17 does says the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way thou shouldest go. He will lead you. Oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, then at thy peace being as a river. So deep, nothing will disturb you. So deep, nothing will confuse you. And thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. It will guide you. I said it will guide you. Look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 26. Acts chapter 8. Verse 26. Here is the guidance. Here is the leading. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose, and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, and read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said, that's the guidance, we've heard about evangelism, we've heard about reaching out, we've heard about preaching the gospel, we've heard about the Great Commission, and our great consecration for the great commission. And here the spirit of the Lord said unto Philip, Go near, join thyself to this chariot. You see, there are many people, they might be great evangelists speaking to multitudes in Samaria. They might be great teachers and preachers of the world speaking to multitudes, but they are not guided to individuals. They are not led to individuals. They stick themselves. They are stuck in what they are doing. But the Lord is saying, now he will guide you. You preach on Sunday. And then you take the Monday Bible study. It will guide you to the person, a single person. You are going to sit down with and you are going to go through that Bible study with them. And through that, many will be discipled in Jesus' name. On Thursday, you have the revival hour. You hear the word of God. You take that word of God. There must be somebody in your community. And you search them out. And the Holy Spirit will say, they are waiting for you there. They are waiting for you there. The Spirit will guide you. I said the Spirit will guide you. All that you have taken as notes during this congress. The Lord has put a lot within you. 
there must be somebody, a believer, there must be somebody who did not come to the Congress and you are going to make the Congress available for them. And the Lord will bless the word in your mouth in Jesus' name. But the people who don't have the guidance of the Spirit, they are blank. They don't know who they are going to talk to. They don't know who they are going to get. And then they are going to inspire with all the words they are hearing. But thank God, now the Spirit will guide you. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. Then the Spirit said unto him, unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and had him reach the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And then you know the story. Verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, shout it aloud, Jesus, the Spirit will guide you. Number one, the grace of the Holy Spirit. Number two, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will not be empty. You will not lack. It will give you the gifts of the Spirit. If your amen is firm, you are going to get something. First Corinthians chapter 12. In First Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going to read to you here from verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The gifts of the Spirit you are receiving tonight, you are going to profit with it. Your ministry will profit. Your family will profit. Your prayer life will profit. To one, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. These are the gifts. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. I can see in my mind's eye multitudes that are going to get healed through you in Jesus' name. To another, the working of miracles. The working of miracles by that same Spirit. To another, prophecy. To another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another uh, the interpretation of tongues. And but all these walketh that one self same spirit, dividing to how many people there? Dividing to how many people there? I'm going to have. I said I'm going to have. I said I will have. Dividing to every man severally as he will. You see that subtitle, point number three, the gifts in the plural. The gifts in the plural. The gifts of the spirit. Now, is it possible for you? I'm not going to say is it possible for any man because I'm talking to you in particular tonight. I said I'm talking to you in particular tonight. Is it possible for you in particular to have the gifts of the Spirit? Yeah. What's the person that is going to have? Praise the Lord, he will pour it upon you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let, let me show you one man. And see the attitude we ought to have. And see the attributes we ought to have. And see the action we ought to take so that we will receive the gifts of the Spirit. I'm reading from 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask, ask, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, tell me. Tell me as if you are the one answering the question. 
Let it double portion. Somebody shout double portion. Somebody shout aloud double portion. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. He received. Look at the manifestation. Remember, word of knowledge. Remember, word of wisdom. Remember, prophecy. Remember, speaking in diverse kinds of tongues. Remember, interpretation. Remember, discerning of spirits. Remember, the gift of faith. Remember, the working of miracles. Remember, the gift of healing. And see this man, Elisha. When he said, let a double portion of your spirit come upon me. And the spirit came as it's coming upon you mightily tonight. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2 of Second Kings. I'm reading from verse 19. In verse 19, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord sees, but the water is not. And the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And he brought it. That's the wisdom God gave him, the word of wisdom. And he went forth unto the spring of waters and cast salt therein. And thus he said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from this any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed. Unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake, walking up miracles, it happened. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a, a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out, and shall pour out, and shall pour out. Your vessel will never dry up. In all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Ah, wonderful. Your life is going to be full. Your children are going to experience the fullness. And your family, they will experience in Jesus' name. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and she poured out, keep on pouring, and she poured out. Pour your life into the service of God. Pour your treasure into the service of God. Miracles are going to happen through you in Jesus' name. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. And she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt. All your debts are paid in Jesus' name. And live thou and thy children of the rest. Can you see that? Can you see that? That the work of God now began to prosper in his son. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 10. Chapter 5. And we're looking at it from verse 10. It's just Elisha. And now it's going to be your turn. Yeah. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him. That's unto Naaman saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee. And thou shalt be clean. 
thou shalt be clean. Look at verse 14. Then went he now and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. Do you see the life of Elisha? Miracle upon miracle. And from this time in your life, miracle upon miracle. In your district, miracle upon miracle. In your utterance, miracle upon miracle. Chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell, where V is too straight, too narrow, too small for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, be satisfied, be pleased, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. You are ready every moment. From now on, with the Spirit of God upon your life, you are ready in Jesus' name. And he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was failing, cutting a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? You know what? No problem perplexed Elisha after he received that double portion. And from now on, no problem will perplex you in Jesus' name. And he showed him the place. And he cut down, and he cut down his cheek. And cast it thither. And the iron. And the iron. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee. Everything you lose, the Holy Ghost will show you how to recover them in Jesus' name. And he put out his hand and he took it. Look at something here. Look at it from verse 8. And the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. That's the word of knowledge. What the man, what the king was thinking about in his chamber. The Lord, through the gifts of the Spirit, revealed to Elisha, and he warned the king of Israel. Verse 10, and the king of Israel said to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once, not twice. Your ministry will save a lot of lives. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this sin. That uh, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, Not my lord, O king, but Elisha, the, the prophet that is in, in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. That means now nothing can be hidden away from you. Because the Holy Ghost knows and it will reveal the truth unto you in Jesus' name. And so the man said, that's the king, go catch him. Go take him. Well, in the past, maybe they go catch you. But this new year, they can't catch you again. The eyes of enemies will not see you. And the eyes of the hands of your enemies will not touch you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots, a great host, and they came up by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and house and, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? You are not going to do anything. Christ paid the whole price already. For your protection, Christ paid everything. And 
Christ and the Spirit of God will do everything. Your life is secured in Jesus' name. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. You will see. And he saw. I said, You will see. And he saw, I said, you will see. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. What happened? And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. You know what I'm reading to you? That every week, every day, every month, every year of the life of Elisha, after receiving the double portion, there was no day missing. Miracle upon miracle. I said miracle upon miracle. And then eventually, eventually, you see, when you finish your ministry, you will leave the stage. But because you have not finished, you are still there and you are going to remain there in Jesus' name. He finished and he finished well. Somebody there, you finish, you'll finish well. The good thing that has started will continue. It will finish well in Jesus' name. Your head will not lack unction. Your life will not lack anointing. Your voice will not lack power. Your ministry will not lack, lack miracles. Eventually, he finished and he finished well. Can I see somebody there who is going to finish well? Finish well. Finish well. The Lord confirm it in Jesus' name. Chapter 13. Chapter 13. And Elisha died, and they buried him, and the, and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year, at the coming in of the year, and it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a bunch of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet to the point of death, even at death, that gift of the Spirit continued to the end of your life. Until Christ will call you home, until the Lord will take you up in the rapture, this gift you are receiving today. Somebody is receiving today. Where is she? Where is she there? This gift you are receiving today will continue every week, every day, every month, every year. You'll be going from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from power to power, from one level of miracle to another level of miracle. From victory to victory, from success to success, Holy Ghost, do it in every life. Rise up, rise up, rise up and receive your own. Rise up and receive your own. The Lord is going to do it. Rise up and receive your own. Here am I, here am I, here am I, Lord, the grace and the gifts, the grace and the gifts, the grace and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's right there, it's right there. You'll never be tired.